Hey y'all, Scott here, and I can't wait to finally head to this Game Controller Issues meeting I just found out about. Yeah, must that pretty bad. Whoa, my hands are doing this. And it wouldn't be possible without the overlooked messiah of all video games, the controller. The pathway between you and the world within the screen. A game controller needs to house all the necessary input methods for games in its era, while also being incredibly transparent. It's best when it just melts into your hands and you don't have to think about where the B button is, it's just all second nature. However, the road to where we are now has been a rocky one. We've gone from to to even. And that road started way early on. Video games need to be controllable to be considered games. So even back in the early days of scientists pissing around and making games on supercomputers instead of curing diseases, they had to create ways to play the games, like with the tried and true knob and button combo used for Tennis for Two in 1958. When arcade machines hit the scene, developers had to design the controls for each of their games, and thus their imagination wasn't compromised by limiting control methods. They could create whatever control method would suit their game best. Joysticks, trackballs, knobs, buttons, steering wheels, each arcade machine was different from the last in terms of controls. So when home video game consoles were in development, there was definitely a hurdle to overcome. Developers were used to having free range with how to control their games in the arcade. How do you create a controller that can be a jack of all trades, one that can work with all, or at the very least, a lot of the games released at the time? Atari said f*** it and gave us a bun and a stick. The Atari 2600 was the first major success in terms of home video game consoles with interchangeable cartridges. The first video game console ever, 1972's Magnavox Odyssey, sure did have a controller all right. The Fairchild Channel F predated the 2600 by a year, releasing in 1976 and has you holding a Snickers bar to control games. But the Atari 2600's joystick is definitely what the general public sees as the first video game controller, and definitely one of the most iconic. While its simplicity made many games harder to convert to the system, it's undeniable it played a key role in its success. No matter who you are, you look at this thing and say, yeah, that makes sense. How can you possibly screw this up? It's a giant red button and a rod. Anybody who's anybody knows what that's about. When you look back at video game successes in the early days, it's apparent that success came with controls that were easy enough for the general consumer to understand, and the 2600 controller was just that. Nevertheless, this thing is just a no-go nowadays. This stick needs to go see a doctor, it's just too stiff. And the overall size of the controller is a problem, for me at least. It's too small to comfortably hold the joystick with one hand and the rest of the controller with the other, and it's too big to comfortably hold it like a modern controller. Overall though, I'd say the 2600 controller was alright for what it was. It's completely usable by anybody, just nothing you jump at the chance to use. After the 2600, controllers went through this ugly phase for a while, and it was all because the controller designer went home to a weekend, looked at his phone and said, I'm drunk. Why? Yeah, the intelligent Clicovision, even part themselves with the Atari 5200, all followed the hot trend of putting a number pound controller. Let me ask you this, and what is the meaning of this simple more than nine buttons? Maybe it came with overlays, but non-controls, so you know what each button does, but that just kind of forces you constantly to look at the controller and know what to press with or without the overlays. In my opinion, that's the controller fails, and that's the way we can figure out how to use the press. Well, they're all flat, we can make a way to intend to learn things, and that's true in the nature of controls, which means the joystick wants something that's more compact than your whole. That's right, the nature of simple compact racing, though, but 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 the n